The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Monday, the 10th of June. We're looking at the Dow. Well, let's just do this for the moment because it's uh, really important. You see this big spike that's unfolding right now? This is the E mini. So it was in a one minute buy mode. It went to a peak C, pulls back, holds the 200 period moving average, nine is positive, and it spikes up quickly. And it goes to this trend line right here. Uh, let me just open that up a little bit. Yeah, so that's actually, that's just a FIB number at 53.52. Uh, Meantime, what we're looking at, there's another aspect that I'm looking at, and that's the five-minute chart. We had a beautiful arch formation from about 5.30 this morning. Remember that Jeff Wave we're always looking for higher peaks to be uh, enumerated alphabetically. Enumerated alphabetically. Yeah, well, alphabetically notarized. Uh, and that means you should go to at least a D. You can go E, F, and G. But D is really the objective from a buy signal to a buy mode. So you can see this went peak A, B, C. <clears throat> And then it went left side, right side, price time edge to a D and an E, pulls back, holds the nine period moving average, pops up to an F and a G, right at the orange 200 period moving average. This is the five minute chart, comes all the way down, goes to the Chapman Wave inside track, dash pink support line right there. Didn't go all the way down to the low. That would have been a number, that would have been right there at um, 5 30 this morning. That was the low of 53. 38.25 in the E-mini, it went down to the 53.40 level, and now it's had a nice strong leg A to the upside. Now, the couple of things, the reason why I'm showing you this, <clears throat> there are a couple of things going on. Number one, as I'm looking at the different markets, let's just do this right now. So we've got we've got Apple down a dollar eighty nine. With all the news that's coming out today, I'm a little surprised that it's down. Uh, uh, <clears throat> it made a new. A recovery high, but not an all-time high above 199.62. Today's high is 197.30. So you can see there's a struggle going on. Really, what I want you to point out here is this. Besides a bifurcated market, meaning that there are some areas like the IWM, which I showed a little earlier when I did the update. Look, it's making lower lows and lower highs, even though it's only down 73 cents at 200.47. It's not such a big deal, but it is it's struggling. But if you go to the SMHs, up until now, <clears throat> up until Thursday, higher highs. No matter what happened, it's just the buying kept coming in. Even today, it's only down 25 cents to 251.96. It hit 255.92. If you look at NVIDIA, NVIDIA is now split. You see all these notations over here? Ah. They stuck in midair because they up at the 1200 level and they don't automatically change. I do everything by hand. So I have to renotate. And this is a leg D in the week in the monthly chart, a leg D in the weekly chart. Look at this. And um, a peak D in the daily chart. And the high that was made was 124.05. Uh, no, 125.39. Let me just type that in. 12539. 125. Point three nine, And everything about this is saying it's fabulous. It's done great. But it's getting a little tired. Nothing technically that you can see. Look, the MACD is good. But if you look at the uh, relative strength, it's, it's it's just starting to dip a little bit. Looking at the MACD, which is really strong at, sorry, the stochastic at 89%, uh, really strong. But um, it has started to dip a little bit. If you look at the unbalanced volume, the little blue line here, it made an M-shaped uh, pattern pulling back. Um, if you're looking at the uh, 9 over the 14, everything there is very strong. But there are just hints that um, there's a chance we have a little bit of a breather coming up. There's only one way that I can play it at this particular point. I have to wait for things to unfold. <clears throat> what does that mean? It means that the semiconductors, as far as I'm concerned, these are the, this is the crude oil of the 21st century. Whereas 
over a period of a hundred and something years in uh, when you go back to standard oil, remember that whole thing, 19, you remember, well, we read about that in 1906, uh, there was that whole thing. Um, what we're really looking at here is within the context of a new era of the mechanization or electrif electrification of a, a new form of energy, that's the, that's the microchips. So I look at this and I say, most of the time you can go through, you can overlay these charts and you'll see that where the semis go, the general market tends to go up and down. So at this particular point, they're making the SMH, the, this is the uh, Van Eck SMH. Let me go to it right now, right here. This is a Van Eck SMH, the um, ETF, trading almost at an all-time high. So that's a good sign. Right, and it coincides almost looks like Nvidia, so you don't want to mess around there. Except, how do you play a, a short side? Well, I'll talk about that in a moment, but I want to first of all say before you can look at the short side, mm. you have to be sure. I mean, look, Avagio that's Broadcom making, uh, making a new all time high as we speak. It just went to 1445.20. So I just need to put this into the package. At the beginning of the year, going into the end of the year, uh, some people who know that I always talk about the CODA phase, and at some point we will see another big ex ex uh, um, a surge into buying of stocks, and it will be all around the world. And the way I'm looking at that, is that it'll be it'll be self it'll be so quiet it's like when the um, when the bt when the bitcoin it is when the bitcoin made its all-time high that was back in 2021 i think it was december november december at peak d um it was people were talking about it all the time but essentially it was a stealth thing because it was done on the computers it was done very you know it just nobody knew who had anything right and when it came tumbling down from the uh, seventy thousands to the twenty thousands, oh, it hurt! It hurt like crazy. And my suggestion is that what we need to look for in twenty twenty four, maybe going to twenty twenty five. I don't know just yet. I'm good looking at the timing of all this. Is that there's going to be a flurry, and we will see that flurry. And I, I've deviated a little bit, but it's all tied in. As the iShares, the brokers, the IAI, just screams, it's at 116, 116 right now. I wouldn't be surprised if it's at 160. I mean, I'm just thinking that if this really comes about the way I'm envisioning, um, that's what we're looking for. So therefore, any selling, any really serious selling in the uh, semiconductors will come from just a really overbought situation or suddenly there'll be news about China, whatever it is. And it'll pull, drag everything back down. But all that will happen is that, and it is a leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology. That's where you've got to be a little cautious just momentarily. In leg D, if there is a peak D, and that'll be the um, monthly chart in leg D. And all it says is, even if it gives back a huge chunk, it goes back to the 19th of April, 198. Um, that is a big move down. It's about 20-something percent. But I think that's a really worst-case scenario. I think so far, our best case digestive phase is 210 to 2, 220 to 210. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, so, uh, so when I'm putting the package together, there are a number of icons or sectors, uh, leading sectors that we can use all, uh, just as very, very good information. And I don't see anything yet that tells me that I just want to go really. We, we are short. The, we're still short the Dow from the exact high on the shorter term basis. We've got our very long term longs. We will add to the short position of one of the sectors if certain things happen. But until that happens, I don't want to do that. And here I am. I just decided. Let me have a look at General Motors because um, I think I spoke about this last week. I said General Motors is doing very well. I don't know what the, maybe what is the product lineup. I saw thought I read somewhere that they're still relying a lot on um, on gas engines, even though they've increased you know, tremendously the uh, capacity to be able to do battery uh, the EV cars. But most importantly, look the prices. Look at that nine p moving average cost positive. The weekly chart, 9, is way over the 14. The monthly chart finally is a really strong leg, A to the upside. This is an A that's gone all the way from the 27 area to 47, 20 points uh, straight up. Still an A. <clears throat> that's very good action. Not all of them have done it. For instance, Ford, uh, just it's a nice day today, up 27 cents at 42, but that's not nearly as good a chart. And if you go to Tesla, go to the EV itself. Um, we, I drew this in ages ago. I said, for those of you thinking that Tesla's going to break down and collapse, and those of you thinking that Tesla's going to the moon, I just see it as a, as a trading band. It's in a narrow trading band, and that can last a lot longer than your patience. It can go on all this week, and until it goes above 183, it's trading at 176 right now, or it goes under 169, as I say, at 176. So and this has got those seven, or, seven points or so on the upside, that holds, or seven points on the downside, that holds, um, or breaks down in this case, uh, I it, I don't see it going anywhere. If you look at Toyota Motors, it was at the 200 period exponential moving average. Look at that. It was looking fantastic just a couple, of, about two, three months ago. It was up in the 250s. Lo and bold, here it is at the 208 level. And it's been there for about a week. Um, struggling. So I just wanted to get that out of the way that this is an extremely selective phase. And, um, you know, when you're looking at stocks that have come out with great earnings, like uh, follow the crowd. 
<coughs> Excuse me. This is 378.49, up 29.37, up 8.5%. CrowdStrike, cybersecurity. Not all of them are doing that. It's a leader. Look at this. PANW was doing the exact opposite. It was collapsing, made a peak E uh, back in mid May, and then whoosh down to the, that's up at the 320. I'll give you the exact price right now. 324.66 level on the 20th of May. All right. So that's peak E. And all of a sudden, it goes into a sell mode. Um, down, it goes all the way to, to 280s and rounds to 3 or 4. So not all of them are doing the same thing, and that's what we're seeing in most of the areas. Now, I just wanted to show you something else to go back to what we were looking at, how the uh, pattern, the, the cup formation in the one-minute chart is really improving in the one-minute chart. The uh, five-minute chart has gone green in the nine-period moving average. Does that mean that for the day we can see it green going to peak A and then yet another peak A, B, C, and even a D? The 10-minute chart only now is just an L is appearing, but it's a 10-minute chart. It keeps coming and going because you have to wait for the bar to conclude. And it hasn't uh, rallied into the 53, uh, 52 area. And remember, this is the 5334 um, horizontal line that we spoke about, how it, it would become important and certainly has become important. We missed going there today. And so far, we're in a rectangle uh, trading band uh, trying to go to the upside. All right. So with that said, the reason why I didn't want to do anything other than holding the short position of the Dow is because there, there are just too many pockets of strength that are able to garner the kind of sudden push to the upside, even if it's just, uh, for instance, yes, Microsoft holding very well. Uh, I don't want it there. I want it here. Microsoft. Microsoft, there it is. Look, Microsoft doing pretty nicely. So I said to subscribers this morning that it seems like Microsoft is telling us that there is still a residual strength. There is extant strength that keeps coming into the uh, the, the tech sector. Because look, uh, Microsoft isn't at an all-time high, the 4360 level it was at on the 23rd of May, but it's at 425. I mean, so, you know, it's six or seven or eight points away. You could do that in a heartbeat, just like that. I've still got the Chapman Wave Stork Lake formation right here that we're waiting for a new high, and we'll see what happens there. So yes, and if we look at Apple, yes, it, something's going on. So 10 o'clock today, supposed to start coming out with all different news events. It's down a dollar sixty six. So I looked up and I just uh, on the off chance I said, what stocks could be affected by any good news uh, on Apple today? So I don't know if this is true, but this is what came up. Uh, Flex, which is Flex Limited ODM. Uh, this is they develop uh, uh, software for aerospace, defense, cloud, lighting, energy. Um, Trading up five cents at thirty-two point oh two, eh, it doesn't really seem to be <laughs> seeing seeing much there. Uh, we've got GLW. This is now for those of you who follow GLW, you remember way back going into nineteen ninety-nine and two thousand. GLW. Uh, let me just refresh that so the daily chart comes up. So that's Corningware, the glass. They made that really strong glass. So you have to put things together. So, you know, in 1929, you couldn't get the Empire State Building until a whole bunch of things came together. You had to get the technology. You had to get the materials. You had to get the strength. You had to get steel. But you had to get the Otis Elevator because you couldn't go that high, no matter what kind of materials. And so you got that final ingredient, which was to get the elevator, the safety factor with the elevator. So therefore, you could get the skyscraper, right? You couldn't get Apple. That's why uh, Steve Jobs was so just one of the geniuses of the world in terms of design and putting things together and forcing things to happen until you could get the Gorilla Glass. I don't know what glass, glass it is, but it was a, a ter an extremely strong glass. Until you could get a microphone that was clear, a micro microphone, to get it clear enough so that you could articulate words and, and hear exactly what it is that's being said and translated uh, until you could get the um, speakers 
that gave you the decent volume so that you could get these music programs to oh, symphony concerts. I mean, Gustav Mahler, Gustav Mahler, you know, he, the orchestration is just so incredible. It's all back from the 1910s. Um, it's just so incredible that you want to be able to get that. So when you get it all pieced together, it's really important. That's why I'm saying making a big deal between what the crude oil of the 1900s and the 2000s, and then you've got the chips of the 21st century. So this is a different era. When things come together, that's when you can get these extreme. And that's the reason why I think the leapfrog is the next thing in the EVs. When, we, when someone comes up with a way of inventing a, a way of... Um, transmitting that that energy in the quickest time that's going to be really important so glw was that in the 1990s i'll be right back that was down 22 here's a be done if you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey you've no doubt come across many folks who push forex trading as a way to make big money quickly Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technicians Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider funds investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. So here is the uh, E-mini. Look, yeah, right at the 200-free moving average of uh, 53. Uh, 
5351. Just kind of stalled there, but it is a leg B. Isn't that interesting? So that's what I'm saying, that the, we're, we're not done yet. There is still a res, there's residual strength. And until that wanes, until you start to see the S&P, uh, for instance, earlier this morning, the Dow was down about 120. S&P was down maybe uh, 18, 17, 18. But until you see the Dow down 370 to 420 in the futures and the S&P down, I'd even say 58 to 60 or maybe let's say 52 to 58. And and all rallies just fail. And then you go close at the low of the day and then it happens again. And the, and the, the VIX index, which is at 12.97, really starts to scream much higher into the 14s and hold there to the close. Um, buying just keeps sweeping in. And I, I don't think you want to be fighting that right now. It's, there are easier ways to play. But at the same time, it's kind of difficult to, to get new positions here for, for the positions that have made all-time highs and are close to the all-time highs because they are becoming a little vulnerable. And that makes it kind of difficult. So you want to be looking sort of under the radar or having a position as we have where we've got a position but there's a chance that we could get stopped out, and we're quite prepared for that. So uh, two, you know, two ways of doing it. One is with core positions, and then you want to add to the core positions. Other is with new positions, but you have to give them either a little room or no room at all because it needs to work immediately. Okay, so now with that said, I want a couple of things I want to go to. Um, so a couple of questions came in. Why was the selling... Uh, of gold so intense. I, you know, I can't really, uh, uh, there are many, you read different things. I mean, there's China, there's, uh, there's just, there was uh, selling of gold, just some countries were selling gold. They've been buying of gold. There's been a lot of buying of gold. It's really mixed. I just have to look at the chart and say, well, the nine period moving average over a week ago was suggesting that there was going to be some uh, difficulty pushing much higher but at the same time, the consolidation towards the downside with that low that was made back in May in the gold contract, the continuous roundabout, the 2300 area, that's really kind of sacrosanct. That should hold. And if it doesn't hold, you're going to have to start looking at the weekly chart to say, oh, oh, there is a trend change. And that trend change will suggest that the nine period moving average, unlike the daily, which went pink quite, a, quite a, about a week or so ago, which is still very strong in the weekly chart, will start to get closer and closer to the 14-period exponential moving average. But that suggests also that if you look at gold and you try to separate it from the GDX, um, it's kind of hard to do because although the GDX, in a sense, was kind of lagging for a while, <clears throat> now it's holding much better. It, it is in this... Uh, this is a channel to the downside it's in the channel wave inside track propellant zone. The GDX is the market vectors. Gold miners ETF is up 22 cents at 33.76. Hey, at least it's holding, right? But it's still got tremendous support. It's got support um, at the low that was made on the 2nd of May at 32.93. And then very important, the last decent support will be at 32.20. That was the low of the 23rd of April. <clears throat> but for it to do that, to actually get down there, um, I think that you'd have to see gold either fail on the very in the very short term. It's now come back from the day's low of 2300 and uh, 21, I think it is. Um, 23, that no, can't be that. That's not right. Um let me, oh, 2,304. I uh, thought that was a, a mistake. Yeah. Um, either it, it comes back by midweek and it tries to test the 2,342 area. Uh, if it can't do that, then it's just making lower lows and lower highs. And yes, it does look like it could be a one. This is a chap wave falling axe, expanding axe, actually, formation. Now, that just says there could be a one to one to the downside. So it would take you from about 24, let's call it for argument, say 2480 to 2350. Let's go to this first one 2352. So 30 points. Yeah. So you could go a little bit further. You could go down to the 23, 20, sorry, 2280 area, 2282. <clears throat> 
still not a big deal because that is spectacular in the weekly and the monthly chart. These are good moves. Okay, I just wanted to get that out of the way to say I, we didn't. I, I decided I would not go back into any of the gold or silver, anything like that right now, as we have over the last couple of months. I just tried, you know, for for trades. Um, I need to see this fulfilled. In other words, I need to see the weekly chart. How it tests in the silver contract is now up 15 cents at 29.59. How it, this is not quite right. Let me make it a little accurate there. That's the accurate, and I'm going to make this a little lower so it actually becomes a channel. So now I'm excluding what I would normally do, going to the highs of the candle or the wick highs or the bodies. I'm just going to the most hit number of outer bars in the daily chart of uh, silver. And we're at, and now I can do this. Look, right here is the uh, new there. So this is inside track propellant, make it green, and repellent line. Make that pink. And if we go underneath it, not just underneath it, I would say that you've got to go into 2880. If you go to 2880 or 2961 right now, that's going to be an indication. Lower, lower highs and lower lows, and it's on the way down to test. In this case, 2834 is the 14-period moving average of the weekly chart. On the upside, at any point this week, it doesn't even have to close there, but if it's able to uh, bounce to 30.33, that'll be really good. 70 cents from here up, that'll be quite good action, okay? High-grade copper, high-grade copper took a beating as well. It's come back quite nicely today, up 0.03 at 4.51. It did the one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. Actually, it did just a little bit more than the exact one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. But then month weekly chart is suggesting, yes, the nine period moving average is still very strong over the 14, but um, it's more digesting in time than price. Although I can't say that 5.2 down to 4.41 or 42 isn't a big move down, but I am saying it's had a spectacular move to the upside. So you can understand some digestive phase. I'll just do FCX for the moment. FCX is, yes, it's bouncing a little bit, but it has been making lower lows and lower highs. It's the same. It looks like the weekly charts, the same sort of pattern. Um, Freeport McMurrin trading up 62 cents at 49.91. I think it's just digesting really. So with that said, as we're about to go to this break, I want to do this really quickly. But here's the dollar. The dollar had a really good gain on Friday, and today it's having another big gain. That should be putting pressure on the market. It's putting pressure, but not the kind of that you would expect, not as much. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. 
All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, so we're looking at Palantir, Palantir Technologies, uh, develops data fusion platforms, uh, pull back from its peak D just under 24. It was at 23.95 on Thursday. Uh, today's low is 22.66. And that's kind of what I was talking about before. I was saying this dreaded H pattern that was successful should make a cup formation. And if it goes above and closes above the arch high, and this was at about 22.15 or so, uh, for more, two out of three sessions, that's a really good sign. And that's the sign that we're looking at right now. Now what it says is Palantir <clears throat> is in a, a short-term digestive phase. It had some kind of news that allowed it to follow through with a, a, a good green candle for leg D um, last week around about um, Tuesday or so, and then follow through Wednesday, and then a really nice candle Thursday, pulls back Friday, pulls back today, and that weekly chart still is the nine-period the nine period moving average is above the black 14-period moving average. Green is means that it's it's got internal support, and that's a good sign. So at this particular stage, 2220, I would say it, it mustn't break that this week. And if it's able tomorrow, uh, today might be a little too early. It'll be great if it had to close positive today. But if tomorrow it's able to get to 2352, just any 2348, 2352, and hold there into the close, that'll be another good sign. So yes, it's doing well. Um, the other one is... B Y O N B Y O N. I think this is. I never remember his name. Uh, uh, oh man, what's his name? I can just see Mar Marcus. Marcus. Yeah, Marcus. Mm, Greek name. Um, anyway, down seventy-eight cents at fourteen point sixteen. Was this the company that he was going to do something with? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So um, let me just do this. Now, I, I followed Marcus from when he had those shows. I used to periodically, not often, but I used to watch it. And it's always really inspiring. It's uh, not, not if you're the p previous owner of a business that has called him in to say, I can't get it right, everything's going wrong, because he really lays it on the line, and he just cuts and he puts in place and he does all sorts of things. But mostly, I don't think always, but mostly he turns the place around, starts to make money, becomes quite a viable entity. But when I saw this at the 200-period moving average um, a couple of months ago at a peak D and then an E, and then it pulled back with a big red candle, I said, you know, I have to follow this because buy on buy – oh, this is Beyond Inc. Beyond Inc. is the name. Marcus Limonis. Thank you. Um, yeah. So um, – I had a friend at school back in South Africa who's a Limonis. That's how I always remember the name, except I don't remember it when I'm supposed to. Um, so anyway, yeah, something's not right. So I, when I see someone who has, he has all the publicity, he has everything going for him, there was no reason on a publicity basis why this particular stock shouldn't have done well and held that big spike that went from the 15 level up to the 22s uh, back in early May and give it all the way, all, all back 
and even today's gap down, I just say, be really careful. This is what, in fact, do exactly what Marcus would do. Wait for the signs that tell you you've turned around and then follow the price. But until it happens, it's not viable. It's not an entity that is has turned the corner. So Marcus would say, it hasn't turned the corner. You've got to wait. And I'm just saying, wait. Now, what would I do if I was thinking that there's a chance that it could make a double bottom? Well, the double bottom would mean that the low that was made the week of the 27th of October at 13.71, and today's low of 13.95, yes, you've got a little bit of this uh, Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down failure pattern, except this has gone all the way. I, I usually like to take a trough that's really important, a very good focal point, to say that that would be my left side, right side price time match. So I'd go from that low there, by the week of the 9th of Feb, uh, 20.82. It's not so much the, the price there. It's the pattern. And say, if I can get an exact time price match, well, it misses it by three weeks. So oh, even that's missing. It says that therefore it should probably go a little bit lower and then come back and then start to move. I think it's a little early. So, yeah, so the question is... Um, is this really? Is this is this a very appropriate moment to double bottom and start something very fresh? And I'm just saying to you the evidence of the of the weekly chart, with just up from the the high that was made one two three four oh look a green candle but it didn't go anywhere six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven weeks with almost all of them red candles. I'm just saying to you, wait for the evidence. And I, this is, there are three reasons why. Immediately, the um, monthly chart says whatever was the aberration going to those highs up in the 120s, it just has failed for the last couple of years, number one. Number two is the weekly chart went straight up, almost straight up, hit the 200 period moving average, and it came straight down. The MACD is very weak. The histogram still very weak. Stochastic's terrible at 2.72. That is the worst. It, it, that's it, about as weak as you can get. On balance volume is worse, um, is weak. And the 914 is very, very weak. So that just says, you know, you're not ready for prime time of the week. You have to use the, the daily. Well, the daily had a, a strengthening MACD. And it's still made a low low. So yes, it's divergence. And yes, the stochastic is slightly higher than it was at 6% about a, a month ago. Now it's at 8%. But I want probably the exact opposite candle. If it was on the way up, gap up, I would say, hey, perfect. Now you've got at least risk reward wide. You know exactly where your stop is. It'll be the low that was made on the uh, Thursday, that low that at 14 point, uh 14.57. You can't do that now. That, in fact, is your resistance. It's at 40. Now, stay away, stay away, stay away. Let's look at it again. Give me a yell uh, if it's trading at 16.35. Just even one day. Just has to hit 16.35. All right. Let's get back to our market and what we're looking at. Oh, question came in here. Let me just see. Um, yes. Um Okay, so uh, another let me lean over and change hundreds of shares. Qualcomm, Adobe, Danaher, Texas Instruments. Oh, is this all in the uh, to do? Maybe is that to do with Apple? Let me just see where Apple is right now. AAPL, red candle. Uh, let's go to Qualcomm. Qualcomm. Qualcomm is trading at, um, oh, very nice. Up three at 209.72. It did go to an F right there. And now it's underneath and it's making an H pattern. So we've got to watch this closely. But all the technicals, no. The 9 is over the 14 and the price is over the 9. That's good. The MACD is weak. The uh, relative strength index is kind of weakening. It's making lower highs and lower lows. The stochastics at 65%, that's weakish. And the on balance volume is weakish. The monthly chart has been fabulous. All the technicals there are pretty good. So that was the weekly chart and the monthly chart, same thing. Technicals are very good. Yeah, Qualcomm has been very nicely. It's in a trading band. If it closes under 197 any day in the next week and a half, 
that says, uh-oh, now it's taking a digestive phase. But right now it isn't. It's just resting a little bit. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Type Initials Hour. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. G slash C. After an instant restart, get yourself another D. Yeah, so a good comment there. I like that. I love you on the den. We have so many wonderful uh, traders, people who have done a lot of homework in different areas. And uh, I was busy talking about Bion, uh, Beyond Inc. And um, let's see, what, who was this? Uh, Tony says, I like SN over Bion in the consumer space. So this is Shark Ninja, a global product design and technology company that creates five-star rated lifestyle solutions through innovative products. <laughs> they wrote it themselves for pro consumers around the world. Yeah, but look at this. Shark Ninja has gone almost straight up from a low in the 20s to where it is right now at 75.67, down just 14 cents. But it, on, on last week, it went to, oh, I didn't finish that. It went to on Thursday, it hit 50, uh, 50, did I say 50? It's 80.42. 80.42, and now it's had a low today of 73.36. So it's just a little digestive phase. Yes, I agree. Absolutely. This is the exact opposite of the chart. <clears throat> And in fact, this could have had a little pop to a new high, pulling back digestive phase. And we'll see if, if this is able to get above, close above 78 any day this week is a really good chance as an attest to probably break the high, but it must hold today's low. So that's important, but that's on the, on the daily. But everything here is very, very strong. Yeah, I like it very much. 
S N. I'm going to make a note of it. All right, well, now we're about to. I'm about to hand you over to Steve Rhodes. Should be great programming yet. So don't forget this week. Um, Larry has one of his uh, bi-weekly, bi-monthly um, traders, uh, all-day trading session, all-morning all trading session. Should be fantastic. He's done great so far. What a, what a wonderful series of techniques he teaches. I'll, I'll be back tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm going to say have a great rest of the day. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Uh, we're getting you know, some strategy going over here, and we'll see if that's going to work out. Have a great day. And stay tuned for great programs.